I don't fear many things. In fact, I consider myself fearless. But him? I fear him. Not only does he look like Sid the Sloth had a kid with Eddie Hall, but he actually sets us off on quest to get him shrooms. Why can't this fat ass do it himself? I don't want to enter, you stupid forest, you stupid Shrek clone. This is the very first Harry Potter video game, released November 16th, 2001, releasing on a large selection of consoles, from the Game Boy to the PS2. This game has dipped its little toes into every pond, and that's not a good thing. The real problem comes from the many different versions of the title, and should I review them all, or should I just do the one for now? I think I'll just do the consoles for the day, like the PlayStation 1. This is the superior release of the first year, and later the PS2 version launched and became the superior advancement. Although rated with lower ratings, so screw me I guess. In terms of that reception, here is what we got. And that's pretty divisive, I mean we got 5s, 3s, maybe a 4. Let's take a look at IGN, that seems about right. So this game on average is around a 5, and at the highest an 8. Uh, this time we have an actual sales amount. Okay, so after totaling up the amount from the different regions, this game made $600 million, an insane amount for the title. It also sold over 1 million copies. The PlayStation 1 version was developed by Argonaut, and they used the same engine as Crocs. Let's start the game off with the story, and let me get this straight. Before we go over this interesting concept on the movie, I have so many complaints for this game, and I tend to go with the other reviewers than IGN. This game was not that fun, and the reason I'm mentioning it here is because I had the expectations that this game was at least actually pretty good. Although, after playing the game, I have developed an opinion that I can't really shake. So everything I say will mostly be negative. Oh, and I brought this all up to say that I streamed this whole game on Twitch at Intelligent.tv. Come check it out. Please, I haven't had a single person talk to me yet, and I'm funny. Right? Okay, let's start. I started my PS2 expecting to experience the beloved movie from my childhood, only to find this. This mess. The main story here is not an exact replica from the movie. Now, this doesn't seem to be a big deal. I mean, not every title has to be exactly like the movie, except this one does! Check the name, bud! Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, the exact same name as the movie and the books. A game based on the same name and media source should at least retell the same story, or the same story beats even. But no, this game doesn't want to do that. Sure, there are the basic events that follow the plot of the movie. We will take Herbology, but it's in some weird class and we learn Incendio from a plants teacher. We'll still play Quidditch. Except we catch the snitch in our hands, not our mouth. We still fly to fight Malfoy, but it's a race now. Okay, the last one's actually good. I want to highlight the point that a level made from a plot point isn't always a bad thing. A movie is two to three hours source of media, and games are like double, triple, or quadruple that amount. So turning something like the Malfoy flying scene into a chase level is not a bad thing. What I'm talking about is when the game doesn't even deliver the story or does it in an order that is completely wrong. The scene in which we travel the back rooms and evade Flinch is placed wrong, and after Snape talks to him like he is the evil villain from The Incredibles, it makes him seem to be more like a villain. No, like, I mean really. This doesn't make sense. Without the context of the other scenes, Snape just seems to be evil, whereas in the movies and the books, he just seems shady. They removed crucial moments that mattered more than they realized. It's something that I really want to focus on, and it's a problem that brings down the score down a lot. There are many plot points missing. Things like the troll invading the castle is wrong. There is no Christmas event. The invisibility cloak doesn't even work and it's not a cloak. Worst of all though, there is no intro. They use a book to explain some of the plot points. But why not have a level at the Dursleys? It's just really annoying that the game just starts, and then never really follows the main plot too well. There are also those levels that are just basic fetch me this, and the large bastard is the biggest reason for this. He just keeps on giving you these stupid quests. 
There are some things the story gets right though, like for example, the end of the game where the game takes inspiration from the books and actually adds the potion challenge, something I really like in the books. The troll level, while late, is still very fun. There is a defense against the dark arts level, something that I don't think was in the books or the movies. These are all examples of how this game does something right, but there is even more that the game does wrong in the gameplay. The game has a very simple spell system. You click X to use the famous spell, Flipendo, where you can move blocks and kill snails, the huge. There are a couple of others, like Leviosa, Incendio, Lumos, and Alamora. These are all learnt in the abundant of classrooms scattered through the map. The Flipendo spell is used on many objects, but most normally rocks. Uh, it can move larger ones, um, it can attack, and do oh, other things you would need it to do. For plants that are in the way, and uh, some locks, you can use Incendio and Elamor respectively. These have these mini games that are, um, well, they're terrible. For unknown reasons, this stupid activity doesn't work properly. It, it could be the PlayStation 1, but what the actual hell is this? Is this mode good? Does it work? Why is it in the game? Not good. That's not an answer! Instead of working properly, this stupid, robust mess of not fun fun is terrible. You have to press the button before it reaches, meaning it has no rhythm, but not only that, it's fast and annoying. I really can't do this. What? Oh my god. The other part of the gameplay is of course the every flavor beans scattered through the map. If you click them all, you'll get access to these portraits. What's in them? I, I don't know. Okay, okay. Give me a second. Okay, so they just seem to be wizard cards uh, and you play a mini game to get them and we've seen how far the mini games fare it mostly boils down to someone asking you to do a complete a quest then walking and doing some very weak puzzles there was a moment when i really enjoyed the game actually there are three uh one was dealing with these little guys they walk around eat plants and get big just like us they cover grates that cause the air to build up and you can get to a high ledge yep i like this it's just a charming puzzle. Uh, so finally, second, I like the graphics. Like, a lot. I'm not kidding, old graphics like this are really appealing to me, and this game just gets it right. Sure, the darks are too dark, and the Fred and George have gone through a press, but overall the game exerts that retro game feel, while keeping the core mechanics well. Well, at least, somewhat well. And finally, the third reason I liked this game was finally getting off of it. During my playthrough, I was noticing moments that didn't make sense, and things that weren't coherent with the story, either with the movies or the books. Now, as a non-Harry Potter fan, you may not care about these things, but I really like this franchise, not J.K. Rowling, and I want to bring these things up. Hagrid writes terrible letters. Why the hell does he spell the name the same as he talks? That's like an Australian spelling hey like hoy. I noticed that Neville says something different when getting his remember all. In the movie, he gets the ball and it glows red, indicating he forgot something. He states that he can't remember what he forgot. In the game, he gets the ball and instantly remembers what he forgot and runs to go get it. This is entirely different from the movie and makes me believe the game had lots of inspirations from the book, if not already stated from the developers. Other things got my attention as well, like classes in the wrong locations, Hogwarts being wrong but that's mostly due to developer restraints, and I'm talking about inconsistencies. Overall, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone is not a good game. The presentation and story of the franchise don't add up well when faced with the limited imagination of the devs, a game that seems so easy to create. Slap the main story on the bad boy, and bam, you have a movie tie-in game. Instead, it's something worse. It's a mix of the both. Games that take the characters' locations and theming from a media franchise and don't use them in an effective way, taking bits and pieces to fit an alternate narrative, don't showcase what made the original piece of media so well liked. A game based on Breaking Bad won't sell well if Jesse makes drugs in an airplane and crashes into a building killing thousands of orphans and walks back to the continuing the story. It makes no sense in the world of the genre. Taking parts of the story really disconnects me from what I like about Harry Potter. The graphics are likable, the spells are, well, they're interesting, 
They don't carry the same weight as if they ever did the actual spells they should. In my last review, LEGO Harry Potter did everything right. They had tons of spells and they worked well. It just feels weird to have Flopendo be your main spell. What the hell is Flopendo? The game doesn't give me nostalgia. The game doesn't make me interested in the story. The game made me hate chickens. The game did have its moments. It was still fun. Just, if I was critiquing it, which I am, it has many problems. But don't get me wrong, it's playable, it's entertaining in small burst, and I did play it over just three days. But I'm going to have to side with the other reviewers and give Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone for PS1 a 72 out of 100. I made this game sound terrible, but it has charm. It's not broken, there's barely any glitches, it works well, and it just is an old Harry Potter game, and that's something I love about it. Are you ready for it? About. Go home to your mother, oh. oh, sorry. You don't have oh. one, do you? Oh, God, that was harsh, bro. Mm. To jump, just approach the edge. Yeah, no, I get it wrong. Okay. <laughs> 